Hello, everyone. This is your cruise director, Kristen. Today, come stroll the corridors of vintage color at the mall at Johnson City in Johnson City, Tennessee. This mall is thriving, and you'll see very few vacancies as we walk around here, but it's also got a lot of 90s character and is anything but boring. So, the morning I came here was an interesting one. I took this trip back in January when I filmed the last two videos, and this one was right down the road from my hotel and was my first stop of the day. Malls open at 10, right? Haven't we all kind of accepted this is the normal time for a mall to open Monday through Saturday? This was a Saturday, and knowing this was a well-occupied, busy mall, I did what I normally do in those situations and tried to hit mall walker hours, which means I showed up at 9 to lock doors. I rolled around the mall a little bit, strolled through Dick's, and by 9.30 the doors to the mall were open and I started filming. The reason I tend to go to busy, thriving malls during mall walker hours is because my aim is always to capture the architecture and the vibe of the space. And I'm short, so if you put me in a thick crowd, I'm not going to capture anything but people's backsides. I really try to get as few people in my shots as I can. I walked around, did my thing, got my footage, and noticed one of those made-to-order heat press shirt places, and they had a hoodie I was interested in, so I kept walking around after 10 to try to get the hoodie. A long story short, the small doesn't open until 11, as I found out, so keep that in mind for your visit. And also, keep in mind for the sake of realism that we are in the small 90 minutes before it opened. That's why it's so dead. It's really pretty though, isn't it? You don't see malls this busy that still have this much character very often. The mall at Johnson City opened as the Miracle Mall on March 17, 1971 at 9.30 a.m. with a ribbon cutting ceremony. It was originally anchored by Sears and Super X Pharmacy along with 19 other tenants. We're actually in the original part of the mall right now. In June 1971, Brit's department store, Kroger, McCrory's Five and Dime and an outlot movie theater were added. This was the second mall in the area that we call the Tri-Cities area of Tennessee and Virginia, following the now-defunct Kingsport Mall in Kingsport, Tennessee. This is the oldest mall in the area that's still operating. The Miracle Mall, as it was called until 1983, was developed by Independent Enterprises and Arlen Shopping Centers. Independent Enterprises would eventually be known as CBL Properties, who still exist today. Okay, for this next part, I just want to preface this by saying this mall has one of the most sordid and confusing anchor histories I've ever encountered while doing this. I basically had to draw myself a flowchart to make sense of it. Some of these spaces are on their fifth or sixth tenant. It's really wild. The first change came in 1973, just two years after the mall opened. Brit's department store closed and was acquired by Parks Belk when they moved from their downtown Johnson City location into the mall. A small change to the mall's layout was made to accommodate the space Parks Belk would need. Around the same time, the mall's Kroger location moved across the street and that space became a Piccadilly cafeteria. The 
Walking around a full occupied mall before it opens really took me back to the days I worked at the mall. There was always something really tranquil about coming in before all the lights were on, everything was quiet, all the dust has settled from the chaos of the previous day, and it was just you and your echoey footsteps. And it's a vibe. In 1983, the mall's first major expansion happened that doubled the mall's size. Because it sits on an incline, this new level was added onto the end of the mall and it was at a higher elevation than phase one and it was connected by a bank of two escalators. So in practice, there's really only a small part of the mall that is truly two levels. Really, this is like two single level malls stacked partially on top of each other, like stair steps. J.C. Penney and Miller's Department Store were also added in the early 80s as anchors in the new wing, moving from their downtown locations. With the expansion, the mall dropped the miracle from its name and for a time was marketed solely as the mall. And as a person of the 21st century who has to Google such things, I'm glad they added the Johnson City part before I had to research it. The next anchor change was in 1986 when Miller's would be sold to Hess's and the store's nameplate was changed. In 1992, the mall underwent another expansion and remodel, adding the food court we see today and a brand new profits location on the original lower level. And this is when things start to get really hairy with the anchors. So in 1992, a new profits was added to the mall. By then, Hess's had closed and profits took on their former space as a home store selling housewares and furniture. So at that point, we have two profits in the mall. In 1995, Profits bought Parks Belk, which means that Profits now owned three of the five anchor spaces. This really could have meant disaster if the mall wasn't doing so well. I mean, who needs three of the same store? Even if they sold different things, that's a lot of square footage relying on just one retailer. Within a few years, Profits closed their home store at the mall that was in the former Hesses. A Goodies family clothing store opened in its place, and it stuck around until about 2008. Profits was sold to Belk in 2006, and their spaces were converted to the Belk nameplate. In 2008, the mall's anchors were Sears, JCPenney, Belk Women's, Belk Men Kids and Home, and the former Goodies was vacant for a while. Phew, you see what I mean?
The final changes to the anchor lineup happened pretty recently, with the former Kroger slash Piccadilly Cafeteria becoming Dick's Sporting Goods. Sears closed in 2020 and was replaced by Home Goods the following year. Finally, the former Goodies was turned into a new mall entrance and a junior anchor-sized Forever 21. I really feel like the anchor mix here is good. Dicks and Home Goods are appealing to a lot of people, and just the fact they've got them all full is a great sign. And I gotta say, the Belk here is so much nicer than the one I go to in Ashland, Kentucky. It's really a nice store. The mall at Johnson City is currently owned by Washington Prime Group after having been purchased by Glimpshire in the 90s. Ironically, the same owner as that mall in Ashland I just mentioned, along with many, many others. They're pretty prolific, even if most of their holdings are cast offs from their Big Brother Simon properties. This mall is doing really well in part because it really only has competition from the Fort Henry Mall in Kingsport. The other city in the Tri-Cities area is Bristol, Virginia, and their mall closed several years ago, another mall with a funky layout because of the uneven terrain. That is, of course, other than the tons of open-air outlet shopping in eastern Tennessee. We're not that far from Pigeon Forge, after all. They may not call themselves that anymore, but this mall is still sort of a miracle. It's not all doom and gloom. Some of these malls are staying put, and this definitely looks like one of them. Thank you all for watching. I know it's been a while, but I'm still here and really committed to bringing you more malls sooner than later. Until next time, this is your cruise director signing off. <laughs>